Now we have to talk about state functions and non-state functions. A state function is something that is not path dependent, which also means that for a cyclic process it's going to be zero. Whereas a non-state function is something that is path-dependent, which turns out to mean that it is not necessarily zero for a cyclic. This is not a cyclic, it's for a cyclic process. A cyclic process. To give an example, gravitational potential energy is a state function. Gravitational potential energy is a state function. It's not path dependent. Um, so we can see why that is. So let's say that I take my planner. Let's say the planner starts on the floor. So the planner starts on the floor. And let's say I pick up the planner and I put it over here. Well, then there's going to be some change in its gravitational potential energy. Maybe, just to make it a number of positive 5 joules. Now let's suppose that the planner again starts on the floor. The planner starts on the floor, but this time, before I do anything with it, I kind of pass around my back and pass under my legs. All kinds of curly cues, but at the end, I put it on the ledge again, the same place as before. Well, overall, what was its delta u for that whole process? Yeah. That's what it means for something not to be path dependent. Something that's not, so another way to put path not path dependent, a state function only depends on the initial and final points. A state function only depends on the initial and final points, not on the path. So in those two little experiments I did with my planner, the thing that was the same was the initial and the final points. Both of them started on the floor, and both of them ended on the chalk ledge. The difference was that the path was much more complicated for, that, for the second experiment, but the path doesn't matter for a state function. After all, we know that delta u is just mg delta h, just the ultimate change in height. Another way to put this is, of course, this is just u final minus u initial. Well, that means it only depends on the final and the initial points. If it's u final minus u initial, it only cares about the initial and the final points. It doesn't care about the path. All right, you can also see that a state function is zero for a cyclic process. A cyclic process is one that ends up where it started. A cyclic process is one where the initial and the final points are the same. A cyclic process is a process where the initial and final points are the same. This is a term that you're expected to know now in this part of the course, so you should make a note. Cyclic means that the initial point is the same as the final point. You've gone into cycle. So suppose that I start with the planner on the chalk ledge. Here's it starting on the chalk ledge. And then I take it off. And again, I flip it around and maybe pass it around my back and under my legs. And after all that excitement, I put it back on the chalk ledge. Well, what was its delta u? Zero. Well, that proves again that gravitational energy really is a state function because it's zero for that cyclic process. For that process, the gravitational delta u was zero. Why was it zero? Because the initial and the final points were the same. The height didn't change overall. OK, so that's what these mean. Uh, and uh, it turns out that anything that's not path dependent has to be zero for a cyclic process, and vice versa. We won't, it only takes a minute to prove that, but we won't bother. it. We'll just memorize that these two are the same thing. So either of these would make you into a state function. Something that's not a state function is, say, the work done by friction say the work done by friction. So let's say that let's say that I'm going to start with the chalk over here and then I'm going to move the chalk over here. Well, as I moved the chalk, work was being done against that by friction from the board. I felt friction from the board as I moved the chalk. So there was friction from the board as I moved the chalk and maybe the work that was done by the friction here was maybe 5 joules. Now let's say the chalk starts over here, 
And now let's say I move the chalk like this. And I end up over here. Well, did friction do more or less than five joules of work now? More, because I felt the friction working against me at every point along the line. So the friction just had much more time to do work. Along this path, the work was probably way more than five joules, uh, something like 50 joules, because this path was like 10 times as long. The longer the path, the more work is going to be done by friction here. Well, clearly then, friction is not a state function, because the work done by the friction is path dependent. Because we had the same initial and the final points for both of these cases. In both cases, the chalk started here and ended up here. But when it took the short path, there was only a small amount of work done by friction. And when it took the long path, friction had time to do a lot of work. So clearly, the work done by friction is not a state function because it is path dependent. The work done by friction is not a state function because it is path dependent. Or to take another example, let's say the chalk starts here. And again, I move it around the board. And I end up back here. So the initial point is the same as the final point. So this was cyclic. Well, did friction do any work? Yeah, I felt the friction doing work all along the path. The friction isn't zero just because this was a cyclic process. There wasn't zero work done by friction just because this was cyclic. Well, again, that's consistent with this. For a non-state function, a non-state function doesn't have to be zero even for a cyclic process, even when you end up where you started. OK, so the work done by friction is a good example of a non-state function. We've shown that it is dependent on the path, and it is not necessarily zero for a cyclic process. And the gravitational potential energy is a good example of a state function. It only depends on the initial and the final points, and it's zero for a cyclic process. This is going to turn out to be very important. The state function is zero for a cyclic process. Well, it turns out that this delta u, the change in total internal energy, is a state function. And it turns out that q and w in this equation here are non-state functions. So in the fundamental law of thermodynamics, the delta u portion is a state function, and the q and w are not state functions. It kind of makes sense that this is a state function, because what does delta u mean? It means u final minus u initial. Well, that means that all that matters is the initial and final points, not the path. Remember that this is not the gravitational potential energy anymore. Now we're using delta u for the total internal energy of the gas. But it turns out that like the gravitational energy, it's also a state function. So the total internal energy of the gas is a state function. It only depends on the initial and the final points. That means the temperature only depends on the initial and final points. Because remember that temperature is what's related to delta u. Remember that temperature is not directly tied into q. It's tied into delta u. Now these are not state functions. Uh, Q and W are not. This is, remember, the work done on or by the gas over here. So, suppose I tell you that delta U along path 1 is 6 joules. What would delta B along path 2? Let's take our time on that. Now, delta, uh, path 2 has the same initial and final point uh, as path 1. And delta U is a state function. Well, state functions don't depend on the path, so this should still be the regular positive 6 joules. If they have the same initial and final points, you should have the same delta U not the negative of the delta u. Maybe something you might have been thinking of is if we went from here to here, that would be negative. But if we're, oh, I actually didn't draw this very well. Maybe I, I should have drawn this in. So if I show these two paths, then you can see these have the same initial and final point. Well, then these are clearly both positive 6. However, do the works have to be the same for these two paths? No. In fact, you can tell which one has the greater work. Which path has the greater work? One. How do you know? Area. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. We can see. So the very fact that we know that the work is the area under the curve shows that work is path dependent. Since the work is the area under the path, the work is the area under the path, so the, it is path dependent. It doesn't just depend on the initial and the final points. 
So we would know here that the delta u's are equal, but the works are different for these two different paths.